Welcome to FOSS North, the virtual edition. We would like to thank all our sponsors and partners in this difficult situation. Our gold sponsors, Luxoft and Ansible by Red Hat. Our silver sponsors, ITRS Group and Make It Right. Our base sponsors, our partner projects, the open source community and the region of Gothenburg. And a huge thanks to our awesome community. This would not have been possible without you. So welcome back. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Ashley and Piotr from Make It Right, who will talk about uh, robotic process automation. So the stage is yours. Good uh, afternoon. Um, it's actually quite early for me uh, here in California in the epicenter of uh, chaos in the world for now. Um, I wanted to talk uh, today about the history of application automation and the relationship between open source and uh, closed solutions. My name is Ashley Ritteri. I'm here with my colleague, uh, Piotr Coujon, who is uh, the director at Make It Right. And I am the newly uh, joined CTO. I am a serial entrepreneur with multiple startups in my history, some successful, uh, some not so much. But um, I, I am new to the RPA part of the business with uh, Make It Right, but I do have a significant amount of history and um, I was there kind of feelings about testing and test automation. Uh, early in my career, I wrote uh, airplane controller software, uh, aircraft engine controller software, and other types of safety critical systems. And so my relationship with QA um, as an engineering discipline is a little bit different than uh, a typical uh, web platform developer we had to have 100% test coverage in those environments. And the way in which we tested was uh, prescribed by uh, government standards. Um, but those standards actually made it possible to innovate and build a lot of really cool technology around the tests uh, and automation uh, of those tests. But uh, as I joined um, Make It Right, and we began to develop a, a new version of our platform, one of the key insights we had was that both the RPA market and the uh, test automation market are very similar. Um, and they have a very similar set of technologies uh, at the heart of them and a similar set of use cases at the heart of them. And for us, the thing that makes uh, the future of RPA and test automation exciting is the way in which it will enable um, a new application of skills that have been developed in one area of engineering, the test automation field, um, but bringing major impact into another area of the business, which is uh, business process automation. So, um, Let's take a little tour down memory lane, if we can. Um, in the early days of applications, we're talking about MS-DOS. Uh, it's still not actually the earliest days, uh, but we're, we're talking in the time period here of Microsoft um, having some dominance, Windows coming out uh, not long after. And there were vendors that developed very closed proprietary systems. Uh, to do automated testing. Um, and you know, back in 1990, there, there wasn't really this history of collaborative community style programming. There was collaboration, but it, it really was kind of cloistered in the academic uh, communities and not so much in the commercial communities. I think in 1990, the idea that you would give your software away um, in a commercial setting was still uh, considered a little bit radical. Um, one of the, <laughs> the little tidbits that I uncovered uh, as I was doing some research to prepare for this talk was that uh, the 
selenium name, uh, which actually in, in real life, the element is, uh, is a cure for mercury poisoning. And so when um, they were working on the selenium open source uh, browser testing framework, uh, they were making kind of a swipe uh, at the very dominant closed solutions that were uh, on the market at the time. Um, and then we move forward uh, almost a decade and what an application is has changed entirely. We move from applications that are hosted in uh, operating systems that have very closed environments. Uh, you can't run a an application that was built for Linux or for uh, other operating systems on Windows, and you can't run um, <laughs> the same browsers uh, to a world where everything is in the browser and the browser is king and the internet is driving um, functionality all throughout the early years of the 2000s. But as we know, by late 2000s, the, the phone became our primary uh, source for application interactions and the phone systems also had closed uh, test frameworks being built and test tools being built but in 2011 we have the launch of a fully open um, set of tools referred to as Appium uh, and this really begins to enable the ability to do frequent and um, long running regression testing, uh, managing the, the test environments on multiple devices is a real challenge. And trying to do that in a closed system um, really limits one's ability to support all the different types of uh, devices and environments that those devices. Um, and at the same time, um, we saw an evolution in the proprietary uh, markets over the course of that decade. Many mergers and acquisitions later, some of the earliest players in automation and test automation have their products evolving into um, the beginnings of this market that we now call RPA. And at its heart, what RPA is, is a way of um, sequentially automating away the rote tasks that humans in call centers and customer support centers and claims processing centers are doing, which often involve very direct interpretation of input data and then following a written script to determine where to put that data and uh, how to fill out some other system. Another use case we've come across quite frequently is um, literally copy pasting data from one legacy IT system into another uh, legacy IT system. So you might have one system that has uh, some kind of ticket and there are uh, pieces of information in that ticket, but this system is not continue to be evolving. And so there's no way to build an API from that system to your new CRM. And so you have uh, folks, agents who are reading data or tickets or input um, paperwork, and then entering that data into another system. And the tools that had been previously used uh, primarily to test all of the different ways uh, of entering data are now being asked to using AI and other object recognition techniques to automatically record those rote processes and generate user behavior. And for us, um, we see this as not so different than the revolution that began to occur as applications move away from hosted environments where you operate your entire um, infrastructure and you have regular releases to a model where we have continuous um, deployment into the cloud. And so we have an entire discipline of site reliability engineering begin to open up into building 
tools to automate, automate away the chores of their work. Um, everyone in engineering tends to like to do the creative work. And so if we find ourselves doing repetitive work, we start to write uh, scripts uh, to solve that for us. So there's this convergence of um, DevOps style technology, test automation, continuous delivery, and an opportunity to take those tool sets and integrate them into the shadow IT environments, the legacy IT environments, the, um, the, the large contact center environment. Um, but we believe that the, the only way that the markets for this technology and the, uh, the opportunity that this technology represents both to, to optimize costs, but also to, to reduce errors. Um, when you have thousands of individuals um, using their fantastic ability to make decisions, but they're making the same decision over and over again, it's very easy for a small error to be introduced and for that to have significant financial consequences. So when you can automate those types of tasks, obviously you're gonna be uh, <laughs> reducing that error. Um, but our key focus is on having a platform that enables the open source community to be able to take the skills that they already have. Um, we have these two dominant open source frameworks in test regression uh, environments and in automation environments, and to leverage those skills to provide value uh, in the rest of the business. Um, so as we evolve our AI capabilities, we have a commitment to make sure that we continue to be compatible um, and perhaps to work with other companies on a standard that enables robotic process automation to be as um, open as technologies like JavaScript and HTML and HTTP. Yeah, so... Um... I would just add a few, few notes from my side here. So um, I moved Make It Right from almost the, the beginning of the company. So Ashley went through the, the history uh, uh, of the tools and we see how, how this history impacted the place where we are as a Make It Right right now, but also where the market is. Uh, so when we talk about robotic process automation, um, I don't know how much uh, this 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 name resonates on the open source community right now. But when you talk about uh, when you talk with the business people, they hear they hear it like all the time because there's like hundreds of millions spent on the Google Ads and other means of marketing to get to the business people, not open source community. Uh, we've uh, we've a news that there is like a new technology and something something amazing happened that can solve all the pains for. Uh, business people with the legacy technologies and with the complexity of the systems and uh, from business perspective, lack of uh, quick progress uh, of, of IT teams. Um, so that's their perspective, but our perspective as Ashley has shown a, a bit a history is that actually we are talking about the tools that are there like for 20 or 25 years and uh, uh, open source community, especially Selenium users or, or auto IT users or this, uh, this kind of uh, tools, uh, 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 users community, they're like doing that for years. It's like nothing new. Uh, it's just, it's a different place where we put our scripts uh, uh, that do the job. There is some uh, a bit more strict the rules about deploying the scripts and testing and everything, but in terms of technology is exactly the same. So. Uh, when we look at the RPA market, it's it's crowded with the commercial tools uh, uh, dedicated for a specific uh, set of skills claiming that uh, people from the business can create the robots. But actually, when uh, and that's what we do with Make It Right and with, with our teams of, of uh, experienced people in open source community, uh, uh, open source tools, they're like, you know, they are rock stars when we come to RPA deployments. Those guys that have an experience doing test automation things, they're like, you know, uh, uh, really killing, uh, killing, uh, killing the challenges and just doing great, great job on uh, robotic 
process automation typical deployment so what we find out with uh, with our uh, uh, with our experience that actually there is no tool on the market no platform on the market or even no mean on the market to put the best tools we have in open source communities on this typical commercial like uh, uh, commercial like deployments and uh, well uh, Ashley joined our team to to create the new version of the product um, uh, and the current platform we have is like giving this opportunity giving the giving this capability to open source community to actually open uh, for your uh, for, for, for yourself uh, and completely new area of of using your skills, your expertise, and uh, talking the business language, delivering uh, a completely new new value um, out of uh, something that actually we all are uh, proficient at. Um, and we are doing that for four years. Yeah, so, and, and I think that the, the thing we want to re reiterate is this idea that, um, you know, the interoperability of different RPA automation systems is going to become the central most important element of any automation system. Having a closed environment where your automation software only works on a specific tool set then means that the development community who is supporting the maintenance and creation and operation of all of those different robots, whether the robot's job is to simulate user behavior and generate regression test data, or whether the robot's job is to actually perform work for uh, a business contact center. The, the need to have three or four different uh, technical skill sets in order to be viable in that marketplace, it limits the, the pace of innovation that we can have in this part of the industry. So we're, we're heading for this point where um, without interoperability standards between automated solutions, and the only way we can do that is through open source. You know, we've seen it time and time again in every part of technology advancement that the benefits of remaining open, that, you know, it's not just a lofty idea. It's not just for um, the good of the community. It's actually the only way that the community and the technology can thrive and grow. You can imagine there was a time when you had to write five different versions of JavaScript in order to guarantee that your application could be used on the internet. Um, and uh, we can't have that happen in the automation market. It's very important that all of the vendors continue to try to focus and support um, the development of standards and open solutions. So thank you very much. Yep. Okay, uh, this is Henrik. So there's a couple of questions. Are you prepared? Are you ready? We're oh, yes. ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most interesting part, yeah. And this talk, I managed to actually unmute myself before starting with the questions. Uh, okay, how do you communicate and or work together with the uh, open source project you are using? So we're, we're in the early days. Um, I, I, I believe that by open sourcing our own software and establishing community editions of that software, um, trying to create uh, open communities through whether it's uh, you know user Slack or Discord environments, um, which be even more open, uh, or providing free learning resources. Um, you know we we are an older company that has been very successful in our corner of Europe. And we have a large number of financial and um, insurance oriented customers, but we're now kind of doing an internal startup uh, uh, reboot of both our platform and our service offering. So this traditional history, we, you know, we come from a community of open source developers. The robots themselves have always been, uh, in terms of the delivery that we do, have always been written in open source frameworks. Um, and now we're trying to make our platform capable of enabling that uh, support for open source as well. So, you know, that, that really just comes down to making sure that we're compatible um, and that we contribute to that community, hopefully by, you know, contributing to the source code as well, you know, the base. 
Okay, next question. Do you see cost savings from using open source or is it more about time to market or perhaps both? Oh, that's maybe a, I that's can, a, maybe yeah, I can elaborate question. on it yeah. because that's a very good question and we face it like uh, a lot also when talking with, uh, with the customers. So in case, in, in specific use case, uh, when we're talking today, which is robotic process automation, uh, open source, like straight away, uh, using open source gives you the savings in, in the way of uh, actually getting uh, a proper people, experienced people to do to do the work actually. So when we talk about RPA, the main cost, like 80% of the cost, uh, sometimes even more, is is actual actually the work you need to do to set up the robot, to uh, maintain the robot and make sure that it's working properly. And if we use open source for it, uh, and we use the the for example the experts for selenium to do it, uh, we get that job done like, you know, sometimes it's even three or four times faster. So that's like immediate save. Um, of course, the second part is related to uh, to the cost of the lines. So when we compare the cost of the open source to the commercial tools, of course, we, the answer is obvious. But uh, then, you know, uh, uh, especially enterprise customers, they are asking for uh, uh, some kind of enterprise grade support. And this is something that Make It Right is delivering with its platform. Um, so um, definitely there are big savings um, in terms of pure money, but uh, Long term, it's is also in terms of of you know cost in maintenance, uh, the the quality of the results we deliver, all those things we see that it's it's um, by far superior to to let's say the typical commercial approach to the subject. Okay, and with that, I leave the uh, microphone to Johan, the virtual microphone. Yeah, thank you, thank you everyone for for talking and for viewing. And with that, I would like to thank our speakers, our sponsors, and all our viewers.